ask what the downsides were to the TIF. There are various arguments uh, that have been identified against TIF, which I feel like can be countered with positives. Um, we talked about that that uh, lag of tax tax collection because of the increases over time. That the uh, various taxing bodies, including the village and the school district and the county and so forth, don't collect that incremental increase, that yellow portion, in the future years, above the base year amount that they're already collecting. This amount is not collected. However, the counter argument to that downside is that that amount is, is invested in the TIF to increase the property values. And at the end of the life of the TIF, everybody gains from the larger amount. In addition, I had mentioned earlier the uh, revenue sharing. The village has emphasized revenue sharing, especially as it relates to the school district. So, and that, that is, I know, an emphasis here. I have seen it in other communities as well. They recognize the importance of the schools. We recognize the importance of the schools. Essentially, the schools are something that people look at perhaps most often in a community. You know, the, 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 the community is um, essentially a feature, or I should say that the, the schools are perhaps the most important feature of a community. And they, they represent the community very well. They certainly do in Morton Grove with District 67. And so, you know, from our perspective and working with, uh, with the school district, th this is something we pay attention to. We want to ensure that District 67 uh, maintains its good health and uh, that, that's part of what we're trying to do too. Back to the um, bar graph that you were showing. Everybody loves that bar graph. <laughs> first, those first two years. Yes. Um, the uh, the, um, the taxing bodies don't benefit from. This, this is considered like the base, essentially the base year. In other words, and this is just a this is just a, a generic example. And I think one of the later slides does include more, uh, Ms. Hussein, in terms of the uh, our Waukegan Road TIF. But just as, a, as an example, this is just a, a sample or an example uh, chart. These are the base years. So let's say, you start, let's say you started with this year. This is, say, 2011 or whatever. Let's say that's the first year of the TIF. You have to set a base year at some point. Let's say in the second year, perhaps there was no growth. But then after that, you started to achieve growth. So the, the amount of tax revenue uh, stays the same because the value stays the same. Any increase in value, let's say, did not occur until year three. That's that's what's being shown in this particular example. Would this, would this property for TIF purposes be, the base be valued as a vacant piece of property or as it exists now with a building on it? How would, any idea how that base would be established? That's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think it probably depends on the timing uh, of, of the assessment. It, it, I suspect that it would be, I don't know, Joe, do you have any the, sense of The to, base for this site would be zero because it's not paying taxes. At oh, because it's not paying taxes at all. That's a good so, point. And then there won't be a lag because you also pay taxes Probably. in arrears. Right. So there will be a period from, from solely this property when there is not an increment because there's going to be time for construction mm -hmm. and then you, since the uh, owner would be paying the taxes from, from the year prior, so you'll see the same effect for this this property. Well, the initial year or two or so will be be, be no revenue, but then after that, and, and we're looking at uh, oh, I think uh, the dealership has indicated roughly about a twelve million dollar investment. Um, it, it, we're we're still working to refine that. We we think that probably that would contribute about $300,000 a year of property taxes, but we don't know that to be sure until it's actually assessed. So we think it'll be about $300,000, but for uh, purposes of, of our work, and, and the gentleman to my right is probably one of the most uh, fiscally conservative uh, uh, people in America, and that's what you want in a finance director, we're, we're using a figure of about 200000 made the statement that the yellow fact that the on the bar graph that the yellow is not collected it is collected but it's put in the uh, pot right. isn't it? correct yeah uh, if it, uh, trustee Phil uh, mentioned 
uh, I may have misspoke, I apologize, that the yellow portion is indeed collected tax. In other words, if I own property in the TIF district, my I, I pay tax on everything. It's just that the the so me as a taxpayer in the TIF district, I am I am paying the tax certainly. And, and if my property is worth more, I'm paying more. It's just that how it's distributed, this increased amount gets distributed into the TIF fund. So thank you for clarifying that and keeping me out of trouble. I appreciate that. So I mentioned the key points. I mentioned the TIF benefits. Um, and I think this is, uh, Joe, were you uh, hoping to talk now or do you want me to uh, sure, maybe talk I, about I, this? A, a couple points to, <clears throat> what, are the, what are the ingredients if, if this moves forward? Uh, well, first of all, we have to have a willing buyer. And the question is, well, what, what would be the best buyer for this site? And I really believe that on a square footage basis, other than maybe a, something like a Costco, which you don't have enough room for, and, and much of development is driven by parking, uh, the, the, really the best revenue generator is an auto dealership. Um, and that's, that's the whole community, is paying property taxes, but it's also paying sales taxes. Myself and uh, Trustee Di Maria, who's not here, as well as, as John, have seen the uh, dealerships brought. And I think a, a fair and conservative projection of sales tax is roughly $500,000 a year. Now, the dealer will ask for a portion of that. That's the incentive to get him to Morton Grove as opposed to Glenview or another location. Um, and that probably would go for, oh, maybe 10 years or so. And that's, that's something that's, that's we would be in the process of negotiating. But then after that, that's sales tax to the entire community. So um, it's a high revenue generating business. On a square footage basis, it's, it's probably one of the highest possible. Um, school site, prime commercial, quarter location. Uh, it, if we had to plan Morton Grove over again, we probably wouldn't put the school site on Waukegan Road. There's roughly, I think, we run anywhere from 35,000 to 38,000 cars a day traffic-wise, and, and it's, it's high speed, uh, so that, that wouldn't be the optimal site. On the other side, if you're an auto dealer and you like frontage, uh, good frontage as well as depth for, for your inventory and support services, car wash, garage, everything else, this is a terrific site. Uh, we also have to recognize, in, in my conversation with the auto dealership, sensitivity to the, to the neighbors behind. Uh, there is a park there at present. I've indicated to him that be, be prepared to really do a very thorough landscaping job back there, almost like a, a national parks forest, national forest model. Uh, you, you really want to make that dense to, to, to provide a nice landscaping buffer to the neighbors. There's also a possibility, I, I believe, uh, looking into this going further, that neighborhood for, for some time, my understanding since the park has been developed, has had a, a considerable drainage problems. In, in severe rains, even at ponds up on the street, and it's, it's difficult to drive through. Our public works is aware of this, but I think there's a good opportunity, a win-win situation where obviously there has to be detention and drainage for the site. This may also be an opportunity to tap in a public improvement for drainage for Oak Park Avenue related to the, to the private detention basin. Uh, it, as mentioned, it, 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 it's almost fortuitous that, that things have worked out here, that the timing is right, uh, that, that we are located adjacent to the TIF, all of those things are, are coming into play here. Um, absent those factors, it, it would not work. Intergovernmental cooperation, I mentioned that, that's, uh, that's great lip service all across America, but this is a chance to see what it means where the rubber hits the pavement. Uh, timing, that's a major concern of the dealership. Um, Businesses, they, they, they don't think in terms of putting eggs in one basket. They have other sites. The dealer has indicated that he's, he's seriously considered a couple of other sites. 
And, and that's what a good uh, business person does. So it, he has uh, uh, he has stress from his corporate brand. They want him to make a, a move and a commitment and to do that within a specific time. If the timing doesn't work out for the dealership, uh, this this deal this uh, this possibility would, would uh, collapse. TIF funds, that's where the main ingredient, we do have a, a, a revenue source and, and economic plan for this. Um, primary benefits are the school district, but ultimately it's, it's the entire community.